Brothers and sisters, I'm so pleased to see the show. I've come out today to study a little bit from God's Word, to sing a few praises, songs, and hymns, and uh, to just fellowship with brothers and sisters in Christ who, uh, who believe and who strive to have the end result of being in that glory land way. Today, my lesson. Uh, comes to mind and it stems from what's been going on in our our community here lately in the last week or so. The Austin School District has passed a sex education curriculum that will teach all students about sexual orientation, gender identity, and the LGBT lifestyle to students even as young as five years old. Also teaching our children that maybe they're not a girl or a boy and that they can choose. They even go to the point of encouraging students to engage in same-sex relationships. Our schools also are no longer teaching that we are created by God, but that we are created by stardust that came from nowhere and formed of our planetary system that eventually brought forth microorganisms that evolved into humans and all other forms of animals, plants, and creatures. Our government has legalized same-sex marriage and murder of innocent babies to the point now where they even, where they are even trying to make it legal to abort children, murdering these children at the moment of birth and even after the babies have been born. This is just the tip of the iceberg to all the evil and sinful things that politicians in our city, states, and federal governments of our country are doing to turn our citizens away from the biblical morality that has been a fund fundamental foundation since our conception. Like you, I ask myself, how on earth is this happening? How is it that 40 or 50 years ago this would be unheard of? That we not only, we would not only even imagine these types of things would not just be legalized, but encouraged, not just our adults, but our children as well. And the answer is clear. The faithful Christians are those who claim to be Christians in our country today, no longer are standing up for the truth and for the morality of the Word of God. The false doctrine of separation between our religious beliefs and our political beliefs are, and how we are to not speak in a public setting about our faith, our political views, has brought us to the point where we are today. How many times have you heard the saying uh, that there's two things that we should not talk about in public? Religion and politics. Never in U.S. history has there been such a divide between the two major parties about these particular issues that pertain to morality in our country. We have one political party that stands against the prohibition of abortion and stands against the legalization of homosexual marriage, and then there's another party that puts it on a pedestal, promoting the proliferation of murder of innocent babies up to an even murder that promotes the proliferation of the LGBTQXYZ education to our children, and that strived and succeeded on the legalization of homosexual marriage. So my question to you today is this. Are Christians to separate their faith from politics? The Bible says in Psalms chapter 94, verse 16, Who will rise up for me against the evildoers? Who will stand up for me against the workers of wickedness? Also, the Bible says in the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verse 10, providing what is acceptable unto God, or proving what is acceptable unto God, and have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. What is this saying? Knowing what the Bible says is right and wrong, we cannot vote nor promote for those who are advocating for the proliferation of all of these evil, evil things. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 tells us, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. 
Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For the, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done so, to stand. Nowhere in the Bible does it tell us that we are to stand, that we are not to stand up against all forms of evil. This includes even politically. If our politicians are promoting evil, if they are trying to legalize things that we know are against the will of God and against the morality of his teaching, and are to stand firm, we are to stand firm against these things, and we are to speak openly about how the Lord does not approve of these things. And how our faith will not allow us to stand with these particular politicians. There is no such thing as a sinless politician. All of our politicians have fallen short of the glory of God, and so have we. But the question that we must ask ourselves is are the politicians that are running for office, are they standing for what the Bible teaches? Are they trying to promote the corruption and the proliferation of evil in our country? Whether it be our city council, our school boards, or our state and federal government, it is our responsibility first and foremost to vote. To no longer be silent in these elections, allowing the corrupt and evil politicians to succeed in their elections. And secondly, we must be vocal, speaking against what these evil politicians are promoting in our communities, in our schools, and even our government. If not, who will? When God tells us to put on the whole armor of God, it's because he knows that we are going to have to go to war in this world against evil. His word also tells us in the book of Matthew, chapter 10, verse 34, Think not that I came to send, to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. For I come to set a man at variance against his father, and a daughter against his mother, and a daughter against his uh, uh, daughter-in-law, against her mother-in-law. And a man's foes shall be thine in his own household. He that loveth father and mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. So when you are sitting having dinner with your friends and family over this holiday season, do not be shy to speak against what is going on in this country about how we must stand strong against the evil that is being promoted in our government and how we must stand with by voting and promoting for those who stand for what is morally right and what the Word of God speaks of. I don't know about you, but there's a few television shows I like on TV, and one of them is Dog of the Bounty. Um, tonight is the season finale where Beth Chapman passes away. And if y'all don't know anything about Dog the Bounty Hunter and Beth, they claim to be devout Christians. And you know, what really makes, makes me hurt more than anything else is when I see people who think they are Christians, who think that they are in the right, who think that they are saved, they pass away and instantly go into torment. It's very sad to know that there are so many people who think they're in the right, but they're not. They have not been obedient to the Word of God. They have not been obedient to what the Bible teaches on how one must be saved by hearing the Word of God, by believing it, by confessing it, by being obedient in baptism so that you can contact the blood of Christ and have your sins washed away. And by living faithful unto death in the body of Christ, so that his blood can continually cover the sins that we are all going to commit. It's sadder to me to see someone like that than someone who openly denies their belief in God, had no care in the world about their future and, and their eternity, 
but to see people who really think that they're okay, but we know they're not. And we have many family members and friends and co-workers that we know are outside the body of Christ. And how sad it is to think that we don't do what God instructed us to do by taking the word of God to them, that they too will die in their ignorance. It's very sad. There are many here that have already been obedient to the gospel of Christ. But there are a few here that have not. They are not children of God through baptism. They have not put on the blood of Christ in order to have their sins washed away. They're no longer children, but adults, young or old. They know what's right and wrong. They know what they must do to be saved, and they still have chosen not to be obedient and go to the waters of baptism. If I'm speaking to you today, I hope that that grips your heart and that you choose to be obedient to the word of God and that you'll come forward and put on Christ in baptism. I beg of you. If you've already put on Christ in baptism and you're part of the body of Christ, but you have fallen away, your belief in Jesus and his salvation has, has wavered in your mind or you have slipped in the way that you live your life and have fallen into sin, and you need the help of this congregation of strong biblical believers and strong brothers and sisters in Christ to help lift you up, to help pray for you, and to study with you, and to help put you back right in the eyes of God. We are here, we are willing, and we would love to do that for you. If you need anything at all, please come down as we stand and sing.